So as you guys know that in the drawing process, uh, the blank diameter, the punch diameter, and the die diameter is very important. Then the clearance is also very important. And we have the height of the drawn uh, shape that is also quite important, OK? So we will go through the slides now. So the number one process of the number one formula, which is very important, is the drawing ratio. Drawing ratio. <clears throat> what is drawing ratio? Drawing ratio is denoted by dr. It does not have any unit. And this is db whole divided by dp. OK, where db means the blank diameter and dp means the punch diameter. So I will draw it for you guys. So let's say this is my blank. So the diameter of this blank is uh, D, B. And then we have got a punch also. Remember, the punch has rounded corners at the edges to eliminate the effect of stress concentration. OK, so this is punch diameter D, B. So the ratio of blank diameter to that of punch diameter is called the drawing ratio okay and there is a limit the limit is that the drawing ratio cannot be should not be greater than should not be greater than 2.0 okay so it should always be within or less than or equal to 2.0 if we have uh, the drawing ratio which is greater than 2.0, then the amount of forces and the amount of stresses which are generated during the drawing process will be quite difficult uh, for the blank to uh, sustain. And there will be some defects which are formed, such as wrinkling, such as uh, piercing, such as cracking, etc. So we need to make sure that our drawing ratio is less than or equal to 2.0. Okay. That's number one rule. Let's move to second rule. Second rule is the reduction. So as the name suggests, reduction means how much we are reducing the uh, size. So reduction is generated by R. This is blank diameter minus punch diameter whole divided by blank diameter, dB. Okay. Since it is a ratio, so it does not have any unit. So the reduction has no unit, and the drawing ratio also does not have any unit. <clears throat> OK, now the rule. So this was, let's say, rule number A. Now there is a rule for reduction as well. OK, rule number B for reduction is that the value of reduction should be R should always be less than 0 0.50 or uh, what you can say 50%. It should be less than 50% or 0 0.50 percentage in case you are going to multiply the ratio by 100. Okay. So this was reduction. Next, we move to uh, thickness to diameter ratio. So I will mark uh, the thickness in the diagram as well. So this is your blank, blank thickness. So the thickness to diameter ratio is also very important uh, for uh, gaining or for gaining the information whether we can do the drawing process or not, whether the thickness is accurate or not accurate, and is it within the limits or not. If it is within the limits, then only then we can proceed with the drawing process uh, safely. So, uh, so thickness to diameter ratio is equals to T whole divided by D B. Okay. And the thickness to diameter ratio, this is rule number C. So T over D B should always be greater than 1% or 0 0.0. One. So if your T or B DB ratio is greater than 1%, then you are working in the safe limits. 
However, as the T over dB ratio decreases, it goes down, then the tendency to wrinkling defect. Remember last time I showed you that if you have a piece of paper and then you're going to uh, basically square, squash it, okay, then it is some kind of a wrinkling defect. So similarly, wrinkling occurs on the corners of your drawing, uh, what you call drawing uh, part as well. So it happens on the flange of the drawing part. So if you have your flange and the flange are the corner parts, then wrinkling can occur on the corners of the flange. So obviously when wrinkling occurs, then my product is not formed correctly. So as the T over dB uh, ratio decreases, as we approach to 1%, then the amount of wrinkling can increase, okay? So this is rule number C. So in order for your drawing process to proceed safely, all these three rules should be satisfied. Okay. So let's move to our numerical. Remember the guidelines for solving the numericals. Number one heading for solving numerical is given data. If you're going to solve your numericals uh, with the structure which I've given, then obviously if your answer is incorrect, still you will get the marks for the process and the thinking process and the data that you have obtained from the question. So remember to go through those steps. So number one is given data. Number two is the applied formula and number three is the calculation or solution. So let's take a look at this. Uh, numerical a drawing operation is used to form a cylindrical curve with inside diameter is equals to 7.5 millimeter and a height of uh, 50 millimeter so they are going to form a cylindrical cup okay so let's make and let's draw a cylindrical cup so this is my cylindrical cup with an inside diameter of 75 mm So inside diameter is 75 mm. And a height of 50 millimeters. The starting blank size is equal to 138 millimeter. So initially the blank looks like a circular part, right? So when it looks like a circular part, obviously the starting blank size is the diameter dB. So the starting blank size given is 138 millimeter. This is a dB, the size of the blank diameter. And the stock thickness, so obviously this material has some thickness as well. So the thickness of the part is Thickness is equals to 2.4 millimeter. Okay. So based on this data, based on the data which has been given to us, we need to understand whether we are within the safe limits or not. Whether we are following the rules, rule number A, rule number B, and rule, rule number C or not. Okay. So in order to see whether we are following the rule number A, rule number B, and rule, rule number C, we need to uh, first calculate these ratios. Number one was the reduction ratio. Number two was thickness to uh, dB ratio. And number three was, uh, the first one was the drawing ratio. Okay, Drawing ratio, reduction, and then thickness to diameter ratio. So we need to write the formulas. So number two is applied formulas. Okay, so applied formulas is uh, so applied formulas is uh, number one dr is equals to db. <clears throat> I'm not using my iPad today, so it's um, 
so dr is used to db over d p okay so d what is uh, dp punch punch size okay so the punch size is the internal uh, diameter so if you can see here the punch needs to go inside right so this is your punch so the punch diameter is equals to the inside diameter of my uh, workpiece okay so the punch diameter will be equal to also 75 mm okay so we go and dr is equals to db db is equals to 138 whole divided by 75 which comes out to be 1.84 so my dr is 1.84 okay the rule was that dr should be less than or equal to 2.0 so my value is less than or equals to 1 2.0 so this is permissible okay so i am in within the limits as far as the diameter reduction ratio dr is concerned i am within the limits okay so uh, we are within the limits Next, we move to number two, which is reduction. Reduction R is equals to dB, which is 138, minus dB, which is 75, whole divided by uh, 138, which comes out to be 45.65%. This is also less than 50%. So we are within the limits. Next, we move to the thickness to diameter of the blank ratio. This is equals to 2.4 whole divided by 138. This equals to 0 0.017. So if I multiply it by 100 is 0. Point, sorry, 1.7 percent. This is greater than 1 percent. So I am still within the limits according to the rule okay so it means the final answer is we can safely uh, use the drawing process to make the cylinder So this is your final answer. Remember always that let's say if my cylinder is this, then I've got my punch also. This punch is going to go down in this manner, okay? So we can assume safely that the internal diameter of my product and outer diameter of my punch are almost equal. So internal diameter di of my product and punch diameter dp are equal. So sometimes they will not give you the punch diameter. They will give you the internal diameter of your product.
so i hope uh, this numerical is clear to you guys if you have any question you can ask otherwise i will proceed okay so i will proceed to the next uh, slide now that we know we can safely operate our uh, drawing process let us start with the forces which are uh, generated during the drawing process okay so yesterday we day before yesterday we saw that we need we have got a plank okay and to do the drawing process we need a die okay so we have got a die which has a die cavity this is the die cavity and then we know that the die diameter is also very important okay we have got the blank diameter starting blank diameter dp okay and then we have got a punch so we have got a punch which has some clearance with the die diameter okay so this is the punch diameter dp okay and there was one more thing involved in order to hold the blank on its place we need a blanking force or a holding force for that we have a blank holder so the blank holder keeps the blank in its place and there is a force which has to be applied on the blank holder as well so to do the drawing process we have the holding force f h and then we have the punching force fp it means that we need to get formula for fp and we need to get the formula for fh the punching force and the holding force these two forces are important for me to carry out the drawing process so the maximum uh, punching force formula f is given by pi into punching diameter dp multiplied by the thickness stock thickness of my blank multiplied by the tensile strength of my material whole multiplied by the ratio of blank db over dp minus 0 0.7 this is my force punching force or the drawing force required you can call it drawing force And next we move on to the holding force holding force is generated by fh fh is given by 0 0.015 multiplied by y okay y is the yield strength wheel strength is different for different materials so steel has a different y then we have got aluminium it has got a different sigma y yield strength so you will be given the yield strength of the material so yield strength is required for the holding force and tensile strength is required for the maximum drawing force so fh or holding force is equals to 0 0.015 multiplied by the yield strength multiply by pi multiply by diameter of the blank whole square minus diameter of the punch plus 2.2 .2 times the stock thickness plus 2 times the rd now rd is a new term whole square okay what is rd remember we saw we know that we need diameter we need a radius on the corners of my die and we need radius on the corners of my punch this is to prevent stress concentration okay so rd is this radius okay radius of uh, die corner okay rd is the die corner radius so rd is equals to 
डाय कॉर्नर रेडियस so this is the formula formula in which the maximum drawing force required the tensile strength of the material and the holding force required the yield strength of the material remember that so in order to further uh, visualize this we are going to solve another numerical for calculating the force required for drawing and the blank holding force fh so let us move to that Uh, numerical okay so question number 2 a drawing operation is used to form a cylindrical cup so once again a cylindrical cup is made so we are going to make a diagram of a cylindrical cup and make the dimensions on it with an inside diameter of 75 mm so we have inside diameter 75 mm so the inside diameter of my cylinder is going to be equal to the outside diameter of my punch so i can safely write that dp diameter of the punch is equals to 75 mm the height once again is given as 50 mm the starting blank size is 138 mm so the starting blank size was d d was 138 mm the stock thickness thickness so t is equals to 2.4 mm determine the drawing force so f is required to be calculated determine the holding force fh is required to be calculated given the tensile strength of the sheet metal low carbon steel so tensile strength ts is equals to 175 mega pascal and the yield strength y is sorry so tensile strength is 300 mega pascal tensile strength is 300 mega pascal and yield strength is 175 mega pascal and the tie corner radius rd r d is equals to 6 mm so this is the given data next we move to applied formulas so we have already covered the applied formula so you can just copy paste from there and now we move to solution <clears throat> so based on the formula f the drawing force is equals to pi multiply by dp is 75 multiply by uh thickness is 2.4 multiply by wheel strength sorry uh, multiply by the tensile strength is 300 whole multiply by dp or dp is 138 whole divided by 75 minus 0.7 so the force of drawing comes out to be 193396 newtons and then we move on to the holding force fh this is pi multiplied by dp is 17 5 multiplied by 0.015 sorry so the holding force is 
Have you checked uh, just now uh, the calculation? Is it correct? Yes, correct. correct. The, the it, you... Okay, it means that we need to put uh, everything in millimeters. Okay, so all the dimensions in drawing and in, in all the processes are usually put in all dimensions are put in millimeters, and the megapascal or the yield strength ys or uh, UTS or the tensile strength is get put in megapascal as it is. So no need to convert. Your question so is correct. Means the, so which means the mega and the milli will cancel all the correct, will correct, out correct. then the answer will still correct, be the same. Correct. correct, okay, correct. Yes, because because uh, let's say I have uh, my tensile strength is equal to 300 uh, megapascal Megapascal means uh, this is 300 into 10 to the power 6 Newton per meter square, right? But we can also write this as 300 uh, Newton per millimeter square. And then because all of our calculations are in millimeter, so they are going to, they are also squared. So they will cancel out in the end. So we are left with Newton force. This is the story. So, uh, megapascal is equals to uh, Newton per millimeter square. So, one megapascal is equals to one Newton per millimeter square. So, that is why it will cancel each other out. You can also convert, but it will be a very long process. So, better leave it like this. <clears throat> okay, thank you, sir. Okay. <clears throat> 